But you know, yeah, and, 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 you know, sorry, go ahead. No, it's just because that makes perfect sense because uh, I've never I've never been to Jamaica. No, admittedly, but uh, rich with culture, I can totally see that because I mean, it's it, it's not it's not just reggae that, that came out of there. I mean, a lot of things spawned off from there. I mean, Kingston, how how's the quote how's the quote unquote rude boys who later became associated with ska because ska is more like a, it's, it's more like an upbeat reggae. I, absolutely. So or, I mean, and then athletics. I mean, look at the people that have come out of trouble. Lonnie, I, th- that's the thing about Jamaicans and their culture too, which is that they hold people still with great sense of appreciation for their tactical abilities. It's not just how much money you make. It's not just uh, you know the material things that you have. They'll go on talking about a musician or people for days, and and how it also stems into their life, the, the message of what they're saying and what they're talking about. That's for me as a musician was like oh my god this is a no brainer <laughs> I, I love this I, I love you know having that experience or you know my guitar being there, there was also like not my weapon but a security blanket if we were in Kingston I'd be standing on a corner singing and playing at first I'd play a couple Bob numbers and a Bonnie Whaler right. number or something and, and then a couple of my own and when you got 150 people in Kingston standing around singing your own tune that you it, there's nothing better I mean, you could be on a stage in front of thousands of people, but that raw connection is just, and the people are like, who are you? Well, come with me. Do you want to have something to drink? Come on, we're going to have some food tonight. Done. All of a sudden, it's just like community welcomes you because of that. And, 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 that, and there's no greater feeling than that. Well, that's awesome, which kind of answers my next question, would, which would be, <laughs> oh, well, it just, what it comes down to is like, uh, have you drawn inspiration from, I'm, I know you have from Jamaica, but from the different places you visited, has that uh, helped and contributed to what you've been writing? Yeah, I mean, in the last little while, I've been writing a lot of songs about um, this, some of the conversations that we've been having on, like, the rock, rock side, uh, on a porch somewhere, things that we're, you know, feeling and about our, our brothers and sisters, let me put it you that way so or and or even my trips into the united states for that matter and the people that i've been working with over the last year uh, the songs that i'm writing in a metaphorical way i'm trying to pay uh, a homage again to people like mike or ken segrist or other people that have pointed me in the right direction and and and, 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 and uh, without sounding egotistical i've realized the potential of the music so for me there's uh, uh, I, I feel like i owe them a lot and to me writing a song is, is the biggest way I can show my appreciation. You know, it's it's very cool because, like I said, I just want, I was just curious because just like not not just uh, culturally, but like a, like influence, but by some of the music too. I mean, I somehow at some point it kind of ends up, and it doesn't have to be like a full like. Um, oh, I can tell that's uh, you no. Know, uh, um, let's see, you no know, reggae from Jamaica or you no know, this from somewhere else. But there's just a little bit of influence, and it could be lyrically. It doesn't have necessarily have to be musical either. No, absolutely. I mean. With- a tune like Jamaica, yeah, okay, I just got off the plane, you know, a couple weeks home, I'm missing being on the island, I'm up in the studio, and what am I doing? I'm playing one drop stuff on the drum kit. And out of that came the that kind of funky beat that you're talking right. about, and putting the two together. Before I know it, I'm just singing, in Jamaica, I'm just singing and playing the drums. And then I started to think of the story of what happened on our last trip, being in the car, driving around, the, the, some of the things that occurred. So it was very easy to sort of piece it together in this sort of rappy rhyme kind of a thing. And not only that, I was trying to, in a way, also being in Jamaica, some of the newer stuff that's down there, like whether it's the chronics or it doesn't matter. Right. I, I'm into it, but I'm so attuned to old school instrumentation. So, so a lot of new reggae which is four on the floor it's like, mm, 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 and it's got that kind of a pulse to it where for me the definitive thing is the is the missing one and then the heavy three and also that organic raw grungy machine like quality that reggae seemed to have to it that the 70s and 80s had you know and so when i put on a, a, a whaler's record and i listen to a clav part when i hear a digitalized clav and the studio for me i can feel it i can tell the difference between the artificial one and not only that i can also tell that it's been quantized or cut and pasted 
Oh, wow. So when I hear that, it's missing that human edge. That's one of the things about music and writing music and performing it. It's like somebody asked me the other day in an interview, have you ever made a mistake? I'm like, anybody that ever says they've never made a mistake is just lying. Yeah, no and kidding. the thing is, is that making a mistake is like, okay, I made it. But the mistake can also show you a number of things, including it could turn into something else at some point in time. And, or you'll learn from the fact that you don't want to make the mistake. Yeah, but the point point being is that you, you, to struggle inside of the music and not to be imperfect about it, like say that was a bad take, that's, you know, but to, to have that human edge is what for me is missing from the digitalized version of music. It, it, and, and sometimes it's out of the sheer sake of the necessity of having to get it done quickly, affordability, right. I mean, even with television today, it's the same thing. Most the shows that are reality shows what it takes a sound person and a camera crew of one guy maybe two go and shoot it no script necessary uh then all of a sudden it goes to an editing suite with one person that's sitting at a board and a computer putting it together boom it goes to the network it's punched out the, the, the yesteryear era of like writing script character development right. lighting costume a show like all in the family Sanford oh yeah and son any that's that's gone we don't have that anymore there are a few shows that exist that are like that but they're 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 not as popularized as they were or in the mainstream as they were in the past so you know we live in a very interesting moment in time with so much changing and, and people always ask me too they say well what has the music industry changed a lot in the last 25 well yeah it's changed it's Absolutely, always yeah. changing <laughs> you know and, and technology is also one of those things that's also changed with music and music has changed with it. The important thing I think to realize is that to treat it like a tool, it's not what makes the artist. The artist is what makes the artist. The vibe, the thing that they create, and the feeling that they that they put down, whether the medium is tape, it's a hard drive, it doesn't matter what it is, or it's live in the moment. That is what needs to be captured. And I think that's what people can, can see that the difference and hear the difference in. Well, very well put, man. I, it's, I just, that's incredible that you can tell the difference with some of that stuff because I mean, obviously I'm not as well versed as you, but I'm not sure and <clears throat> if I could always, uh, if I would be able to tell the differences in some uh, a- aspects of stuff. I mean, if, it, if it's a cover song, absolutely. I can tell the differences right away, you know, but but that's that's pretty simplistic. Right. But uh, my next question, just because we're uh, speaking of instrumentation, that sort of thing, you mentioned that you played a sitar on one of the songs on your new album. No. Yeah, no. my uh, my nephew had come to me and had said something like, well, my buddy's grandfather, he's got like the sitar in his basement, he wants to get rid of it. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I've always, you know, I play the banjo, and, I, and the banjo and, t- and the sitar to me are very akin as, as far as this tone of the instrument. They're very different as far as their approach. Right. But uh, I just started to go, okay, well, how much does he want? And it's like 100 bucks. So I'm like, okay, so I got it. I ordered away for a new set of strings and some uh, to fine tuning swans. Uh, that I met people like, what are you talking about? Swans for fine tuning? They're actually little ivory, not ivory anymore. It's a composite. Right. Of, it looks like a little swan or a fish. Oh, wow. And, and they sit at the back of the bridge, behind the bridge, closer to the back end of the instrument. And once you've used the compression pegs to basically get the set strings where you need them to be because there's seven playing strings and then there's 11 symbiotic strings that are symbiotically vibrating to the tone of the actual note that you're playing off of the string they allow you to chromatically and fine tune it so it's so hard to use a compression peg because there's no mechanics in a sitar. It's just a, a carved peg of wood, of lotus wood that you jam into a hole and push in there and turn hard enough that the lo- Lotus wood grabs. It's just like old uh, be- uh, uh, ukuleles are like this and things like that. They have compressed, even some old banjos have compression pegs as well. So those little swans help you do that. So I, I started to mess around with it. I, I got a book. It started to talk about some scales. But at the same time, as much as I've been teaching and I'm interested in what the book has to say, I was, I'm also like a bit of the free love experience with a new instrument. So sit on it, at it, play it, listen to how it's reacting. How 
uh, you know, think of things that you've heard before and try to imitate them. And before you knew it, I was like, you know what? This song, Melanchthon June Book, that I've written on the guitar, or the whole head and everything, would lend itself so well to the sitar because the sitar, like the banjo, has that buggy, buzzy like quality to, right. to it. And I thought, and so and I said, well, let's try it. And Mike was like, okay. So we, and Mike's done a lot of recording with sitars and tabla drums and things like that in the past because he and I both worked with a lot lot of Indian artists so we let's try and it worked out so well and I, I, I the intent was hey they always use the banjo but then I thought well hey you know what again I'm gonna try to push myself to try to make it happen and I, I love the way it turned out and again I you know it helped yeah. illustrate this feeling of this June bug doing this soft shoe wearing a tuxedo that was seven and a half feet tall from, you know what I mean it right was, it, like a cartoon as a version of it Right on. So we have time for one more song, and we're going to get to a song called Coming My Way. This is Ed Roman. Dig this. I've been looking for a good time. I've been looking every day. I've been waiting for the sunshine It's been coming my way And oh, oh, oh It's been coming my way I've been dancing at a hold down Love to chew the fat with folk been sipping on the moonshine I've been telling dirty jokes and oh, oh, oh it's been coming my way and oh, oh, oh it's been coming my coming my way now ed this song in particular stands out as like it could be a campfire song or singing the porch like we talked about before no the harmonies were great and having the extra uh vocals added at the end uh sounded really good and that's what kind of made me think of a campfire because everybody can sing with it well that's what i was kind of going for i i wanted to you know <laughs> Some people always say, Roman Christ, you always write such complicated music. And da, 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 da. It's not like I was trying to write simplistically for that reason. But I also just wanted 